What is up you guys? I'm James from Step and in today's video we're going to be talking about crested geckos and why you shouldn't cohabitate them, even though I do. Let's get right into it. So let's start with the basics. What is cohabitating? So basically in reptile terms, it means keeping the male with the female. Now, if you're keeping pets, crested geckos, male and female, they're going to breed. That's just, they're so easy to breed, they're just going to do it on their own. So if you're going to have pet crested geckos, not a lot of people really recommend it because you're going to produce babies and, you know, the male is going to be aggressive towards the female because he wants to breed. So you're going to end up lost tails, bite marks with scars, potentially lost toes, thinner females because they're laying eggs. And you're like, great, I won't put a male in with a female. What if you want to keep them as pets and you want two females? Well, again, a lot of people would recommend if you want, if you really want to do that, big enclosure like this, and you, this is where I'm going to get a lot of hate. In the Facebook groups, they say it. They're like, they, they ban it, they forbid it, they will oust you if you do. You better not keep two together. But in my opinion, if you have enough cover, if you have enough foliage, they do just fine. Especially the females seem to leave each other alone because they don't really care as long as they have their own places to hide. I know my certain geckos, they all have a certain place they like. And most of the time, if I look in there, I'll know where a certain one is. Let's take a look at what a breeder setup would be. So I know a lot of people like Tiki's geckos. What they do is, and they don't use glass cages, they use tubs. So they'll have two or three females in a tub, lots of cover, lots of foliage, and they'll move the male. And they might even have an empty smaller tub for just the male. So, you know, they can put him in there and he can just be fine on his own for a while, right? Now what I like to do, and this is where I'm gonna get a lot of hate, what I like to do is, these are my four tanks, and only two of them are set up for uh, Crested Gecko breeding, but this one's set up for gargoyles. It's set up exactly the same. Um, is I put three females in, one, two, three, and I put a male in. And I don't rotate the male. I leave the male in there 24 seven all year round. I know, I know. Hit the dislike button, leave a mean comment, and tell me I'm gonna kill my geckos. I've been breeding crest geckos for over a year. I've been keeping them for about two years. And this is just how I've done it. You know, this is how I was sold them or given to them, given them by my friend, just a male and female together all the time. And I, I, I understand with other species, you know, I keep and breed leopard geckos. You can't do that with leopard geckos because they absolutely wear the females down. In my, in my, you know, I've got six females all together plus two gargoyle females. Never had a problem with one of them. Let's take a look. So here's a female right here. Now, she's not huge, but I will say it's because I grew her up and you know, when I put her in here, she wasn't huge and she's, you know, they take a while to get to size and I can feel eggs in her. And then they kind of grow the last little bit really slowly. So there's that female, right? Missing a tail, like I said, that'll happen. If you, especially if you want to breed, you're gonna lose crested gecko tails and it sucks, but that's just kind of the way it goes. But let's see if I can't get another one out. Cause I know they're in here. So down here is another female and you'll see, oh, this one's a little jumpy. You'll see the tail tip on this one, missing a little bit. And you know, it's probably from breeding and all that i do not feel eggs in that one which is a bummer because that one's got the best dimension spots but you can see you know perfectly fine female lays eggs and somewhere in here there's one more and i guarantee you that one will be just fine too right here oh no that's the male the male is also a little small because i grew him up and you know they might not even be that small they're just to me they are because the uh, original pair I got was like so old that they were just like grandpa size at that stage, which if you don't know, just kind of means that they're really big because they're really old. And now somewhere in here is one last female. Let me get her out. There she is. So one last female, again, missing a tail, 
like I said, that happens. It happens a lot. Um, you know, I, they didn't all lose their tail as soon as I put them in. She just la lost it last month. They've been all in together for a year. This one lost it before I even put them together. Just as a baby, she lost it. And this one, you know, lost it uh, about, about uh, six months into being together. So it happens. And the male still has a tail. So do with that information what you will. But that's what works for me. And I'm going to keep doing it. Now, the reason I bring this up is because a lot of people are going to hate on me for it. And a lot of people, you know, if you posted this video in a Facebook group, it's going to get a lot of hate. If you told your friend about it who keeps crested geckos, they're going to tell you I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm never going to get them to reproduce and blah, 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 blah. I'm here to tell you, in my opinion and in my experiences, what has worked, what is currently working, and make educated guesses of what will work in the future. So, I keep a male in, what is this, an 18 by 18 by 24, Exoterra. I keep one male, three females, and an egg box with a centerpiece and three pieces of foliage, if not four. I try to get fourth one, I drape it over the centerpiece. The centerpiece is always a big, tall branch. I just kind of like, if they want to walk across, they can walk across. If they want to hide under it a little bit, they can do that. It just works out real nice. Now, the problem people have with this is one, the male shouldn't be able to be with the female because he'll pick on her too much or they'll kill each other or yada 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 i've never had that happen i've been doing it a year now that's not a long time it's really not especially in reptile reptiles that's you know for a lot of reptiles it's one breeding season for crested they kind of go all year round um that's another plus they go all year round but that's another thing people will tell you to watch out for they will go all year round if the females really do go all year round you might wear them out you know mine each one kind of takes a couple months off usually. So I'll get a bunch of eggs, it'll slow down a little. I'll get a bunch of eggs, it'll slow down a little because one of them will stop for a little bit. And that's just kind of what I've noticed. Now, other people will tell you, that's four geckos in an 18 by 18 by 24. That's way too much, there's not enough room. I couldn't even find the last one. I couldn't find the male either until I, you know, it took me a minute. There's only a couple hiding places. I know where they should be, but I couldn't find them. That sounds like enough room to me. Doesn't it sound like enough room to you? Nevertheless, they all eat. They all do awesome. Like I said, only one of them lost her tail being in there and one of them lost like a nub of a tail. The other one has its tail and the last one lost it before it was even in there. And in this, this tank, none of them lost the tail. The male and the female original pair I had were both missing tails. So I don't know if they lost them together. The two females I added got tails. Still, they've been in there for a year. I know, crazy, doesn't make sense, right? So, I'm making this video just to show you guys, you know, you're gonna, if, if, you, ask, if you ask the question, if you show people you're doing it, especially on Facebook, because there's all sorts of Facebook war warriors, all sorts of YouTube comment haters, they're gonna tell you it's not possible, they're gonna tell you you're doing it wrong, they're gonna tell you, you know, you should keep animals. Don't let that discourage you, you know, they are animals and their lives are, you know, important and we want to value them and try not to waste, you know, you know, waste any like, I don't want to kill an animal for no reason. That's just stupid, right? But we do have to try new things. Otherwise, we're not going to evolve as keepers. You know, no one would have found out that rack systems work if no one threw one in a tub. If we only kept them in glass cages, they would have just always been in glass cages and we wouldn't have been able to breed all the cool stuff we had. And, you know, we wouldn't have found out that, oh, ball pythons like tubs better than glass cages because they hold humidity better and this and that and blah, blah, blah. It's all stuff we wouldn't have learned. Now, this is something people said, don't do, don't do, don't do. And I went and did it. <laughs> um, when I am keeping animals, when I'm trying out a new species, when I'm like reinventing how I keep a species, that's the first thing I do. I go, how's everyone else keeping? What improvements could I make? Why haven't they made those? And what's the easiest way to do it? If it's easy, if it's the same way they do it, if it, you know, if that's, if that's it, that's it. But if it's still a little too much work for me, I move on. But if I can find a shortcut, like keep them all together, I don't have to move the males. I don't have to have a separate tank for the males. 
I don't have to feed the males separately. They're all in here, they're all doing great. And that's just the way it is. So, that's what I wanted to tell you guys today. Um, I'm gonna go around and feed some, some crickets. This is another thing I'll mention if you do feed crickets, and I don't really see this in the breeder tanks, I see this in the babies, because I raise babies together. Kind of teaches them, you know, how to eat, where the food is. If they're gonna eat crickets, and one of your four is gonna eat crickets, it'll kind of entice the rest to eat them, because I know some are very picky and some don't eat crickets. So I'm gonna feed crickets. Some of the babies sometimes bite on each other because they think it's crickets or they're lunging for a cricket. Like I said, I don't see that with the adults, I see it with the babies. I could see why you would want to keep babies apart. I don't, you know, if one loses a tail, so be it. It's it's worth it to save me that much more time feeding, wasted food, tub space, tub cleaning, all that jazz. So, nevertheless, let's, let's feed off some crickets. All right, first up, a couple for the gargoyles because I know they probably won't eat them. I've given them a couple times and they don't seem to care, but let's see if this one gets that. Nope, not interested. There's there's one right in front of her and she's not interested. This is a girl that laid an egg, by the way. I gotta, I gotta go through, make sure there's not more eggs and separate the two females. And that way, because it's been almost a month, that way, if she lays again, I'll know it's her for sure. And the other one that's not laying eggs, I can sell as a retired breeder. So these guys, I know love crickets, so I'll give them a few. And we may hear them thrashing in a bit. And I'm gonna start getting crickets once a week. I get them in the thousand count. I sell a couple to my friend slash coworker. And I think the rest, I'm just gonna sell on Facebook for what I bought the thousand for. <laughs> They'll probably sell because I get them so cheap, it'll be cheaper than any of the stores anyone else gets them from. Oh, that was a lot. Whatever. Have fun. And this one I really want to feed. It's got my lily white in it. That lily white is uh, not quite ready to breed, but I'll give it like three, four more months. Oh, dropped a cricket. And she'll be, you know, good enough, good enough size to put in and to start breeding. And once you really put the animals in together, it kind of like, I don't want to say forces them, but it gets them to beef up because they have to, you know, they have to handle their own. So when they're in there, they're going to eat better. They're going to bulk up quicker. And they're definitely going to start breeding. This guy I'll tong feed because I know he'll eat them. But first I gotta figure out, where is that? All right, that's gonna be it for today's video. I'm all done with feeding, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that definitely helps out the channel. And make sure to check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, James Jeptiles, at Jamila, if you have any questions, and I'll catch you next time.